Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another LinkedIn Live. I'm Dr. Laura Socola with Focal Impact Productions, and I'm here today joined by Uwe Dockhorn. He is the lifestyle liberator for high achievers and their families. So first of all, Uwe, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, it's a pleasure being here with you today, Laura. <laughs> There's, a, you know, and, and I want everybody to understand out here, we are talking uh, very specifically about the topic of stop directing start connecting. And so many of us who are those type A's, or even not necessarily type A's, but overscheduled, overworked, probably underslept, and, and just overextended professionals between work and family and all of our other obligations that we have, it's so easy to get lost in this kind of tunnel vision of just needing to get stuff done and finding that we get home and instead of really connecting with our families, that we're just directing traffic again, much like we're trying to manage projects at the office. And the irony, of course, being that we're heading into the holiday season now. This is supposed to be the happiest time of year, whether you celebrate Christmas or Hanukkah. By the way, happy Hanukkah to everybody out there who's uh, coming to the end of their holiday week, uh, those celebrating Christmas, where it's just around the corner in the next couple of days. The new year is around the corner for all of us. So happy holidays to everyone. But uh, you just it's supposed to be happy, celebration, festival, holidays, parties, lights, all that fun stuff. And yet for so many, it is the most stressful time. It's just taking more stuff to do from planning and shopping and cooking and buying gifts and all this kind of stuff. It just adds to an already overburdened plate and makes us dive even more into that default drill sergeant kind of a mode and we lose that connection we forget what it's all supposed to be about uh, does this sound familiar uve absolutely so and uh, yes i cannot agree more uh, what you just said and uh, essentially it's uh, it's really the time when you know when you get into the festivities and everything the expectations are high and uh, you know and this is the first thing that uh, you feel uh, you know uh, expectations get lost <laughs> so and you know and therefore i just want to start with uh, something that was uh, happened to me uh, on on a christmas day and uh, really because everything you just shared was really me living in 2016. Mm. So uh, when before it was, you get into your story, yeah, and I want good, all good. of that, I want to invite those who are joining us on YouTube and because I don't want anybody to miss any word of your story. And every now oh, and then there's you. a little glitch with LinkedIn in particular. LinkedIn Live gets a little glitchy. So if for some reason you are unable to um, to connect on LinkedIn or the, the um the stream is not great, then here is the the YouTube link that you can use. And I'm going, so everybody feel free to do a quick copy of that. And I will also, um, I'll copy it and I'll repaste it again into the, uh, the, the comments for everyone. So LinkedIn doesn't work, please go to YouTube and we will see you there. So, uh, and with that, otherwise, let me figure out how to rehide that. No, we don't need it. There we go. Um, so, <laughs> Uwe, I would love for you now to tell us our story. And for those who are joining, please tell us where you're from and uh, your, your names, all that kind of stuff. And please, we want this to be an interactive discussion, right? We want to invite you to ask questions. If something that Uwe shares in his story or in his advice resonates with you or inspires additional questions, please put it in the chat. We want to know what you're thinking, what you're feeling, what your experiences are. And we would love to address any of the specific challenges that you have because we want this to be a happy season for all of you at work, at home, and everywhere else. So with that, Uwe, Lifestyle Liberator for High Achievers <laughs> and their families, please share with us, what is your story? How did you come to this situation and where are we going to go today? Absolutely. Thank you for that. Um, so, you know, I was in that situation uh, that you know you just described at the beginning so so vividly and vibrantly. So that is uh, you know you are busy, you are doing things, you're doing some stuff for your family, and you prepare everything, and you're kind of like in that directing mode. So it's kind of like oh, this has to happen, this has to happen, and you treat your family kind of like you know if you're an executive, for example, as if they were your employees. And so it, you cannot go, you know, like that. And sometimes uh, you don't even. Uh, just realize it. And so therefore, uh, you will run into traps. And for me, it was kind of like, because, uh, you know, um, my my mother and uh, this story, it's, uh, it's a little bit sad, because uh, 
I, I just go for it. So it happened six days before Christmas in 2016. Mm -hmm. And that was the day um, when my mother died. I'm so sorry. Thank you. And I always cherish that I was there for her, holding her hands when she left. And, you know, I loved my family and it was my safe haven. And although they gave me their love and protection as a young boy, I was sexually abused and told no one. Mm. Wow. And then after I lost two very important family members, my uncle when I was 16 and my father when I was 23, something just broke inside of me. And, you know, I started to believe that the remaining members of my family had just given up on me. I distanced myself from them, even my mother, because I felt I couldn't risk opening up to them. And I became isolated, separated from friends, I lost my job, was overwhelmed physically and emotionally exhausted. And I felt there was no reason for being in this world. Mm. You know, I wasn't sad or angry. The truth is, I didn't feel anything at all. That's when I found myself on the edge of a bridge one cold winter night. And I could see my breath as I slowly leaned forward. I let go. But at that moment, something happened. For the very first time since my father had died, I felt something inside me. And it drew me back from jumping. It literally saved my life. And, what and was that, that night, I learned an important lesson. I learned that transformation requires more than letting go of the status quo. So without the other half of the equation, letting go just leaves you in free fall. If all I had done on that bridge was to let go, then I would not be here talking to you today. So you're probably wondering, what is the other half? Well, the second half of the equation is to feel, perceive, and let in what is already there. Letting go and letting in, it's a two-part mechanism, and they're only complete as a pair. And on that bridge, all those years ago, I let in a small spark that grew into a powerful flame. And I made myself a promise that I'm still keeping today to make it my life's mission to help others learn this secret. Because letting go and letting in is crucial for your well-being mm -hmm. and your family, family's happiness. Yes. Letting in energy, positive thoughts, and a sense of certainty, letting go of self-doubt, fear, negativity, and stress. And it really is that simple. And the more you do it, the more it happens. It's like a switch that you can just consciously flip, you know, to uh, strengthen and re-energize your relationship with your partner every single day. So, and that is why letting go and letting in is so important during these festivity times because you know as you can imagine what happens when you're stressed out when you just start directing you know you're just in that mode what you really need to do is to let go of that and let in something else that is already there waiting for you sometimes you can't see it but it is there mm. it's really there and it's you know just to make it really tangible it means like, so if you're going right now out of the office, you know, you've finished work and you go to your home, to your, to your loved ones, and you're standing in front of that front door, you know, that is the moment where you need to let go of that role from work. You know, you're an executive, if you're a medical professional or wh whatever, whatever role it is, whatever the hat you're wearing, you know, turn it off, turn, put it down and allow yourself to be the partner, the parent and uh, the brother, you know, the sister, you know, be you and be the loved one for your family. And this is why this is so important 
yes. letting go and letting in to really get into that mode. And you will avoid uh, these stressful situations and communications. Now, let's talk about how to do that, because the idea of I like the two halves, the let go and let in. You have to let go of something to make space to let something else in. Uh, exactly. And as you said, you know, of course, ironically, yes, it's that simple, but that which is simple is not necessarily easy. So I love the concrete example of, of course, when you're if you do have a physical commute, when you get out of the car and you're walking in just having that door be a, a a trigger, a visual trigger, that's your reference point saying, okay, I'm here, I'm about to walk into my house. It's time to, to shift gears a little bit. And maybe if you're working from home, you're, you have your home office, you have your basement door, your bedroom door, whatever the door is, there's a knob that you're going yes. to grab to open that door and walk as if, you know, the Chronicles of Narnia, there, there's the doors on the wardrobe what, before you walk in through that whatever that that space is that you're transcending from work to home, when you set foot through, we need to start with the awareness, I think. And yes, because most of us, the whole point, you know, we're saying how to stop directing, start connecting, how to get out of that autopilot boss mode and autopilot happens because we are not consciously aware of what we're doing. We just are a default. So what is something that we can do to help us first and foremost raise awareness of the fact that either we haven't shifted or that we need to shift because we're about to change spaces? Do you have a suggestion for that? Absolutely. So you weren't aware of all of that until just now. Because I just shared with you what is the secret behind all that. Because it's really the letting go, letting in part. And being aware of that there's something uh, inside of us that we have is the first step of awareness. It's really something then you have to make it your own. Of course, as I said, also, you do it more often, the better you get. So it's not just kind of like switch and it's on forever. Right. You have to turn on your switch over and over and over again so and make it tangible with an example like you just shared so it's really kind of like if you are uh, in that busy stress mode so then see the book the door for example that is kind of like the border this is kind of like the end of a uh, work realm mm. and after that is family realm so and you're entering a new realm and you breathe out work realm to breathe in family realm hmm. so make it tangible so sometimes it's really it can be as easy as that before you go inside your home breathe out work and everything be breathe out your role the director's mode breathe it out breathe it out of your system let it go and yeah. then you automatically have to breathe in because I tried it. It doesn't work. <laughs> to do it typically, what, typically what happens is that people think eh, wait, we, only, we, we only have to let go. So I did this on, <laughs> on one of my demonstrations with my audience and like, okay, let's do that. So let's really just let go of that. And I say, stop. Okay. And so everybody was kind of like, okay, breathing out and let go, let go. Yes, yes. With all your force, let go. And I never said, stop. Mm. Yes, tricky me. But, but you know what happened? At one point, <gasps> they just sure. breathed in, you know, and just yeah. let in something else that was already there waiting for them. And it yeah. is as simple as breathing in and breathing out. I know it sounds simple, but it, it can be if you allow yourself to embrace that kind of thing. I think so, breathing is so important. Right. I mean, Absolutely. beyond the, you know, duh aspect of, yes, we have to breathe, <laughs> but the mindful, deep breathing and taking that pause. And I don't know about you, but I am a big fan of post-it notes as simple as they are, you know, for people out there who may need a more active, concrete reminder to do so, if nothing else, take a post-it note and write whatever you want, switch, breathe stop or something and put it right above the door, right above the hand, the doorknob or the door handle so that you see it before you grab something that's a visual reminder, direct instruction. Uh, I, there's yeah. those kinds, put a tie a bow on the doorknob or, you know, you mentioned the analogy of changing hats, right? You're going to go from, from nice. boss hat to dad hat or mom hat or whatever it happens to be. Why not hang a hat? 
hang a baseball hat, hang a different kind and, of hat, right? Or a scarf of some sort right there on the doorknob as a visual reminder to, to change gears when you walk out. Because we know we all shift instantly back into boss mode when we're starting work, but it seems to be harder to shift out of that when we come back to the personal. So any sort of tangent, tangible yes. visual reminder to do so, even right, breathe right there. So that as your hand is on that knob, you just pause, close your eyes. <sighs> and release before making that conscious step out. I think that's terrific. Uh, no. Yeah, give, it, give, yourself, give yourself some signals, kind of like you are entering family land. Yeah. <laughs> like so it's, it's really, it's really it can be that, uh, that simple. And it's also that, you know, when you are, um, when you're doing this, you get better at it and you can yeah. have fun. You should have fun with it. And what you also can do is um, nothing against post-its, but what really works best is if you have something uh, that you want to advise yourself, kind of like that helps you speak it out loud, mm. listen to your own voice. Mm. It sounds silly, but it really works because only then when you speak it out loud, you can feel yourself mm. and therefore you can also start to believe yourself. That is a huge step into uh, getting better at doing that. So if you will, this is the second stage after yes. kind of like just understanding the awareness of it, but then really practicing it and uh, you get better at that. Yes, there's something about hearing yourself speak into a, an intention. The act of verbalizing and of vocalizing it, I find for, for many people is actually a bit um, disruptive in many ways, you're not used to hearing yourself say these kinds of things, but when you have to feel the vibrations in your throat and the resonance in the rest of mm. your body and hearing the sound of your words, it, it changes, it makes it more tangible. And there's you know, the word inspire, Uwe, uh, I, I've been talking about this a lot recently. Are you familiar with the, hist the, the root of the word inspire? The root? No, yes. not uh, the root of the word me. inspire is from the Latin inspirare, which literally oh, translates okay. to breathing life into something or to mm. breathe spirit, spirit and life being one and the same historically. So to breathe spirit into. So when you speak life, when you speak your voice into that intention, stop, breathe, change shift whatever you want to say you're literally breathing life into that intention and it really helps to propel forward it, it's interesting and you mentioned it uh, because it's absolutely true and uh just reminds me when i work with my clients in a deep deep session you know essentially we discover you know all the blockages first i call this elephant thinking so some things that get kind of like stick with you for mm. almost forever sure but there's something also like an uh a core elephant and uh, so really get uh, to the root cause of things and you know in this session they I really guide them to that point where they can let go of that uh, core elephant thinking and then you know they make their first step in letting in something that is there and that is uh, more positive and hopeful and for the first time they let in something else and I ask them questions so they hear themselves saying for the very first time something that comes up at a point at this point of their of their journey and so it really is uh, kind of like that is the first breathing uh, breathing in breathing out experience articulating um, who they can be what identity shift they can do, what they want to be and who they want to be and what they can start to believe then. And mm. so they really start to reprogram themselves uh, on that guided journey. And because it's uh, so uh, a deep uh, experience for them, we are creating a memory. Mm. And therefore that helps them to essentially um, thrive later on when they feel kind of like stuck or, or kind of like uh, there are setbacks and they fall back to their old behavior. Sure. And it's like, well, you know, you've done it before. That's true. And they felt something and they experienced something to help them through this process to really get to that moment so they can remember it and do things differently in that very moment. So you mentioned early on, what is something tangible? Because you can't change just thinking yourself through transformation sure. never worked it's 
So it's I always make the comparison, you know, um, you can't think yourself through a transformation. And so I say, so think of it like uh, you want to change yourself and you have to go through that bottleneck of a bottle because it's, you know, you have a different size. You have to go through that bottleneck. How to do that? But essentially that is transformation and it can work, but only if you are um, connecting with your emotions and you become fluid. Yes. And therefore you can just flow through that bottleneck without has it without any problems and you have to learn that of, of course but that's how you can change for good and for for longer and to do that let's let's back up a little bit and sure. i think that part of the awareness piece so it's one when you know that you're changing uh locations of sorts and you're you're shifting your according to your calendar you're going from boss mode or at least work mode to home mode but what if you missed that cue you've you stepped over the threshold you didn't have the the hat or the post it note or whatever reminder and you just shifted locations but not mindsets and identities and what is something that we should be uh, on the lookout for what are some symptoms of this along the way where we can catch ourselves in the act and realize, whoop, forgot to change hats. I'm still very much in boss mode. I'm with my children. I'm with my partner. I'm with my parents or with whoever it is. I got to shift gears now. Well, you, you just explained it. And, uh, you know, this is uh, twofold. Uh, it is exactly, it is just normal. So it's not that you under you 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 don't make the shift kind of like from letting go, letting in in uh, because you've heard about it and you've not learned about it. You have to actually do it, sure. and you get better at it. And this is just a journey, and it's just embracing the journey. And secondly, uh, you should have a partner in crime, so to speak, and uh, reminding you and having com uh, an open conversation with your partner about that. So it should be okay for your partner to remind you stop sorry i think you're just <laughs> kind of like you still have your head on whatever your your expression is sure. that should be allowed that should be kind of like helping you setting you in the context of like oh gosh okay i get it because you will instantly get it at that moment and so you should uh, have partners in that and therefore uh with your loved ones and tell them look um if even if you're with your kids and so look uh, if that is going uh our mommy is going like a little bit, uh, why are you here? Hey, why are you here? So um, please say stop and remind yourself or whatever, you know, whatever clue you want to uh, use here, you can call it safe word, kind of call it whatever you yeah, want. Yeah, exactly. Uh, no, I think creative. safe words are great. Yes. Yeah, get, create, get creative and find something that works for you and also allow yourself that it's okay to fail for the first couple of times because that is progress. Because you have to reprogram yourself over and over again in little small steps. And I always compare this as like the, the small steps, small steps, they get bigger, they get bigger, they have more impact and boom. And then they really realize. But there's always the, the beginning point and that's just normal. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I want to re, I'm going to reframe one word that I heard in there. And that's the idea that that failure is, or it's okay to fail or a failure is normal. I want to take the word failure out because I think we're so sure. hard on ourselves already. It's like, if you try something, oh, did it fail? You know, in different languages, the word failure has different uh, implications and weights to it. Uh, I know in, in Japan, you know, I lived in Japan for a number of years and by meant kind of everything like oh you overcooked the rice by oh you had a bad hair day by it's kind of a normal but you know here in the US I think the notion of failure is so abject is so weighted that perhaps we can relook at it as you know what you're going to try this to shift and you're going to need to have a lot of do overs and it may not be full the first time or you it may not uh, you may forget a number of times or you may intend to but still backslide in the process. And it's always a work in progress. But that's, as you mentioned, it's the little by little, each step, each attempt, each mini step forward. We're going to look at those as successes on the learning journey, as opposed to just, well, they didn't totally work black and white. Did it succeed or fail? Um, so I'm, I'm going to encourage everybody out there to do that. But let's go back to your idea of um, 
the safe word. I liked that. So do you have some creative examples of different kinds of safe words or expressions that some of your clients have used that somebody might be able to, to either borrow directly or uh, kind of adapt for themselves that suits the culture of their family? I was just thinking about other words for failure. I was just yeah. thinking about uh, having a fun over or something like that. Or a fun over, sure. over, A fun over or, you know, do over or something like that. Yeah. So, and, and so everything goes. It's, uh, you know, it can be uh, a memory of, uh, you know, a shared connection or something mm -hmm. like that. So, and uh, it, it can be anything. So it, I think it's also the, the magic is in creating something that uh, is only valuable to you and your partner and uh, your loved ones, something that comes up. So for, for my, uh, in, uh, I just want to share with my family. So there was always kind of like we had this expression that we were the, fam uh, the Adams family. And so we kind of like, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, just crazy. <laughs> and so and I think a lot can relate to that. So sometimes it feels like being an Adams family and then you just... Uh, use uh, something like um, the thing, uh, don't be a thing or something, you know, whatever it is, uh, it should have a meaning to you and you should have fun with it because if it's fun, it's much easier to consume and uh, get to that. Uh, we can brainstorm some words, of course. <laughs> but I like <laughs> so the, be... the movie reference because, you know, you can think yeah. everyone can choose for themselves. What's a movie reference or, or a character yeah. in a movie, something from, you know, whether it's a, a cartoon animated Pixar like Monsters, Inc. Or, yes. you know, are you grew from um, what was the, <laughs> the Minions? I just lost the name of it. Um, oh, shame on me. I can. <laughs> ah, everybody out there knows who I'm talking about. Oh my gosh, Despicable Me, that was the movie. So, Despicable you know, are you the, 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 vi the villain from Despicable Me? Or, uh, you know, who's a kind of a funny, you know, villainy kind of character that you could associate yourself with when you're in that mode that they could say something like, uh, hey, Gru, could you tell us when daddy's back so we can talk yes, to daddy exactly. or, or something <laughs> along those lines? It just makes you chuckle and go, ah, okay, note to self, I'm in Gru mode, need to go back to, you know, and, and so- Well, you could up with those be- Sorry, you could also be a little bit more more direct and say, "Oh, uh, Mr. Director is is back again." So sure. really kind of like the role that uh, you know you have in your real life. So it sure. can be if you if you if you kind of like amongst your loved ones, uh, they know uh, you know what they uh, should call you. So everybody knows a word essentially. Sure. Uh, for that. So yeah, let's let's get creative. I think movies is, is a good choice. Also, um, you know, if it were a uh what is that um a music can also be uh something that i uh, can remind you and uh, you you sing a song or something you know everything uh that uh, gets you into uh, thinking and helping you to make a point mm -hmm. and uh, realize okay here's the say it can also be a, f a fancy safe word I don't know. <laughs> sure, sure. Something cryptic or something random, like a password to a to, yeah. to, to you would use otherwise. Sure. So anything out there, uh, you know, when Flying you reverence two thousand or something like that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> exactly. So the you know the even if it's the more abstract it is, frankly, the the better because if it's a word that you have no emotional connection to, it right. then there's no. It, it's a very. Um, it, that makes it safer, right? Because it's not going to trigger an emotion. It's just something that has no purpose other than you know, it could be apricot or, or something arbitrary like that, you know, purple crayon. It's like, that's the key word that makes, oh, right. Okay. So I don't have any associations with purple crayons or apricots or something right. like that. So I hear that word and I go, okay, that's your subtle way of saying, I need to take it down a notch. And, you know, I'm barking too many orders when I've just walked into the kitchen for dinner or something along those lines. When I block the kitchen <laughs> for the next movie scene. Yes, I mean, yes, <laughs> exactly. Take out the director and less a literal director at that point. Wonderful. So what's something else that we can do once you've realized that, okay, I need to shift gears. How do we, as you mentioned, you know, we, that way we let go. What's something we can do actively to let in? Well, to actively let in is the is the is the key point. So, um, because everybody thinks that the problem is the letting go part, because we are very well trained in letting go, but what we are not is the letting in part. And therefore, uh, to do this in uh, in in these little uh, exercises that we just explained, I think one uh, one other thing I would like to share with you is um, 
that makes you even more realize if you if you're really kind of like stuck in the moment of your if because fear is often a a great um, blockage and uh, a great barrier in that regard. So if you like, um, I would like uh, us to do um, something together. Laura, sure. are you up for that? Absolutely. So we can like just fun. play together. Okay, yes. cool. So and essentially, it's also what I call a secret. Uh, you know, can say a secret formula of letting go, letting in, or right. a, a liberating lifestyle. I love secrets. And so, <laughs> here we go. So, and it's a formula at the end of the day. So, one of the, as I just mentioned, one of the biggest issues is often fear of speaking out or something doing. And so, really, that uh, we need to sh uh, shift from fear into something else because we're frozen. And so, um, Therefore, I always ask my clients at one point, uh, can you imagine a scale? And I just want you to imagine a scale, Laura. And I uh, let them draw a line on a sheet of paper so you can see that in front of you. On the left side of that scale is fear. And then uh, what is on the other side of that scale? One side is fear. What is on the other side? What is on your other side, Laura? For me, the opposite of fear is freedom. Good. So what we need here um, is trust. Okay. So we have fear on the one side of the scale and trust. Interesting. And then I, then I ask them to imagine uh, where they are right now in this very moment. So just imagine all of you are listening and also you, Laura, where are you on that scale right now from left to right? Fear, are you closer to fear or in the center? Are you closer to trust? Where are you? Uh, on that scale right now? Uh, well, it all depends on who you're talking to in the moment, right? And what the situation is. So you mean just talking of with course, you and course. me right here? Yes, we're just talking you Between and me Between the two right of us, but on that scale, I would say I'm definitely farther on the trust end. Wonderful. So just mark it if you have a, a sheet of paper in front of you. Yep. And you just mark it so you understand where you're at. But also if you listen to this, uh, just do this little exercise with us and uh, market where you are in that very moment in your situation and in your environment. So closer to fear, closer to trust, or right in the middle. Now, imagine below there is another line, but this time it is an arrow. And it goes also from left and goes to the right. Now on the left side, uh, you know, it gets a zero. And on the right side, at the end where the arrow is, it gets the infinity symbol, the eight that is laying on the mm -hmm. side. So, and then the question is, how is this second line with the arrow related to the one above that goes from fear to trust? Because there, there's a correlation between the two. So what is the correlation? So what is the name from the second line here? That's a good question. What's the name of the line? You have an idea? Do I have an idea? What would the second line be? Degree. I suppose, but hmm. it's energy. Hmm. Okay. So that means every time you feel you're a little closer to fear, you lose energy. Okay. And every time you decide to trust, you gain energy. So, and that makes it, uh, you know, really easy to just, at, um, be in the moment and and have that in your mind you just go go through that little exercise in your mind and then you understand okay i'm closer to fear okay i'm losing the energy so yeah and just um to give you also the formula the secret formula is energy equals t for trust minus f for fear mm. e equals t minus f Got it. I'm writing it down. As, as simple as that. So you all you need to know is like energy equals trust minus fear. Mm. So how to get now to the other side? Well, letting go, letting in is your secret because you yes. already learned that. So, and you can adapt, of course, over time if there are other situations, but most of the time it's about the fear situation. It's the, it's the strongest one. And, uh, you know, it happens to all of us. And uh, so if uh, you're aware in a situation, find something where you can let go of that fear in that moment. 
to gain energy because if you're not knowing what you're embracing instead of kind of like you get lost into and sucked into um, more the fear part and uh, you lose energy. Mm. So, so and, am I hearing correctly? Forgive me for interrupting. I just want to make sure that yeah. I'm following and that everybody's connecting uh, with it as well. That the, so where the fear comes into play, are we um, more likely to default or retract further back into uh, default into that boss mode? Because when you're in boss mode, you're controlling some, the situation. You're more in control in boss mode. And when there's a sense of fear, it's a fear of the sense of lack of control is generally part of that. So is that the correlation that we're making here? Yes. Thank you for making that correlation <laughs> for Good. us, Laura. Excellent. Yes. And you connected to, to all kinds of things. But yes, lack of control is uh, definitely a fear that uh, addresses the issue as well. As I said, um, so this happens and it's just normal. And, uh, you know, the more you understand how you can deal with it, there's always a solution for that. And always kind of like, you know, what's also helpful is like, you know, if you have that kind of challenges in front of you, even if it's just kind of like, okay, I need to organize the cooking tonight for Christmas. And uh, so it's, it's really uh, don't be stuck in the letting go part and be part of the problem. Let it go and let in being part of the solution. So that's always a shift. And so it's easier said than done. Yes. Of course. As is most we, 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 We're just tapping into giving you some examples yes. that uh, are, are hopefully helpful and uh, they just work. <laughs> yes, yes. So, so that's, I, I think that's a great symptom to, and a great opportunity for all of us when we are in those sort of high stress, directing traffic modes with family and we're getting the pushback and there's friction and we're arguing with each other more and more to stop. And I think it's a very disruptive question to catch yourself mid argument, mid friction, mid whatever, and ask yourself, I'm feeling the need to control here. What am I actually afraid of that's driving yeah. this need to increase my sense of control? That's a really powerful question because most of us don't like to acknowledge fear, much less you know, admit that we have any at any particular point. So to actually step back and say, what am I afraid of? Where is my fear that's driving the need for control? I think to, to put a name to that and to say, well, I guess I'm afraid of, you know, we're going to run out of time or this isn't going to work. Or if I this overcooks then, or it's not ready on time, somebody else is going to get mad and it's going to lead to, just to be able to articulate what the stream of consciousness is, what the fear is that's real or imagined that is immediate or down the line. And then to be able to say, okay, where is my need to prevent that and or control X manifesting itself in unhealthy ways? Is there a better way that I could go about doing this without just shifting into management boss spreadsheet master kind of uh, drill sergeant mode uh, how does that sound to you am i on it at all uh, no absolutely you're, you're absolutely on it so and uh, another question that is also uh, healthy to have at hand uh, is uh, um, who who does this problem belong to mm, so is it my problem is it uh, who who does this problem belong to yes. so whose problem is this so essentially, so this gives you kind of like that uh, necessary um, distance from it to look at it as if it were kind of like an object in front of you and not part of you. Yes. And so that is kind of like you're shifting that. So what, what you also do is uh, sometimes, uh, you know, it's also a little exercise. You can, there's, uh, you, there's this uh, exercise. You can just imagine a spot in the room above you so if you want to do this with me right now okay. just imagine okay. a, a point Big now uh, point to it with your with a finger from okay, where it. there and from this point now imagine you can observe yourself mm, interesting okay a little out of body experience looking at myself down here in the chair look down at yourself so just monitor yourself and describe what you're doing what you're feeling so how is it like being there in that situation? Mm. So that gives you that shift from a, for a perspective. And that is what leaders need to do 
to need uh, at work, sure. but also at home, because honestly, you don't become a better leader by spending, uh, sorry, a better lover <laughs> by spending more time at work, but you become a better um, partner. No, other way, you become a better leader mm -hmm. when you become a better partner. Yes. Because at the end of the day, it works like this, that you gain the motivation at home and you spend it at work. Yes. And therefore you need that place of, I call this the safe haven yes. of, uh, of your motivation to really regain the motivation with your loved ones. Yes. So you are able to spend it. And so all these little uh, tools and tricks, you know, that can help you on your way uh, to uh, really, um, yeah, get better at that and uh, become a happy family, so essentially. And that's what we all want in the end. And it, communication, people are people. So whether they're people you're related to professionally, personally, or otherwise, I think these are such important and such valuable mindset tips just to redirect the trajectory of our conversations, our interactions, our relationships, and ultimately our lives. Uh, so Uwe, I yeah. can't believe how fast this time has flown. Yeah. Tell us, now you've got a big summit coming up in January. Give us a, a little bit about what's happening and how we can learn more. Well, essentially, it's uh, called YFM, and the acronym stands for Your Family Matters. Okay. And uh, we're doing this annually, and it's really uh, a fun experience for families to uh, reconnect and re-energize uh, their family life in just one day. And wow. so it's happening on January the 6th. And uh, so there is, uh, you know, I, it's a live event. So we'll guide through the event, and you walk away with at least, now here it comes, 12 goosebumps moments Ooh. ready to experience with your loved ones in 2023. And even if you call your loved ones the Adams family, as I do. <laughs> they did love each other. So at, at the end of the day, it's all about the love and uh, the goosebumps moments you can create only with your loved ones because it goes so deep. And um, we want you to, to uh, kick off the year uh, with something positive to have a uh, beautiful uh, memory created, but also created and long, longer lasting for 12 months, be prepared. So you have at least one goosebumps moment and we brainstorm a lot. I'm going to help you also through some exercises that go deeper into what is elephant thinking and uh, you know, uh, also what does it mean to really yes. letting go, letting in. And uh, so you can really enjoy that one day on January 6th, it starts at uh, 9 a.m. Uh, Pacific and 12 p.m. Eastern. And uh, if you are in Europe, uh, it's going to be 6 p.m. CET. Or uh, in the UK, then it's 5 p.m. So, and uh, we go for four hours or so and uh, have a lot of fun. And um, I would like you to join us uh, on that uh, fun experience. I think that's amazing. And it's a great way to sort of have a look to extend that holiday magic of sorts to the idea of a day that's going to in four hours walk away with opportunities for 12 goosebumps moments with your loved ones. I, I think that's beautiful. So, Uwe, how can people learn more? Where can we go? Well, it's simple. Just go to my uh, LinkedIn profile for now. And we're going to publish uh, starting next week. So you can sign up there. Uh, just uh, go to my uh, LinkedIn profile. Yeah, I'll put it right uh, here. Make sure that everybody gets this. Just the, the handle is Uwe Dockhorn in one word. So it's U-W-E-D-O-C-K-H-O-R-N, as you see here in front of me. Yes, <laughs> so yes. It's just that in one word. That's the handle. And you, you will find uh, the announcement coming up for the event on January the 6th. But also you can find the announcement on my website, uberdarkhorn.com, where you can find a lot, a lot more. We do monthly live demonstrations. There's a quiz waiting for you and a lot of other stuff that you can find resources. That's terrific. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, sharing mm. your wisdom, helping us to get out of boss mode and into family friend and otherwise loved one mode. Uh, and so I think it's really great. And I'm excited to, to learn more about the summit coming up on January 6th. And as we know, da -da -da -da. <laughs> <laughs> thanks so much, Lord. This was amazing. <laughs>
Lots of fun. Everybody thank out you. there, thank you for tuning in. Please connect with both of us online. Tell us if you have, if that you saw this recording, if you came in and watched, whether it was live or the archive footage uh, afterward, what was your goosebump moment or your light bulb moment or your Adam's family moment or whatever it was that, that got you extra clear on something today, whatever your big takeaways were, we would love to know. And with that, we wish you all a very happy, healthy, and prosperous new year and holiday season overall. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.